let's start then with the let's start then with the project overview. Um, so um, what is Ampere about? So Ampere is about how to uh, exploit the performance capabilities of uh, heterogeneous and parallel uh, computing architectures. So we all know that uh, more and more uh, the processor architectures that are currently available in the market includes a higher number of cores, a higher number of heterogeneous architectures. And so the question is, is how we can make an efficient use of those computing resources. So in the HPC domain for many years, there have been tools, there have been methods um, that, 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 uh, that really allows to, to exploit all this uh, power available um, by uh, developing a massive parallel systems that, that can run as fast as uh, possible in many different domains like the weather, genomics, big data, etc. Cetera, et cetera. In the embedded domain, uh, this trend has occurred exactly the same. I would say with with certain uh, delay, okay. But there, are, but but there are also a number of of processor architectures that are a GPU based, FPGA based, or a, or even any core architectures that provides um, um, a, a high level of performance. But, but there, is, there is an important difference between uh, the HPC domain and the embedded domain. That is, while in the HPC domain, the main uh, objective is to run as, as fast as possible, in the embedded domain, um, the, the components must operate correctly from both a functional or non-functional uh, perspective. And this makes uh, the exploitation of the uh, this makes the the exploitation of the of this type of processor architecture challenging, um, and so and when we are referring to, to non functional requirements, we are referring to requirements such as performance, of course, that is um, shared by both HPC and embedded domain, in which we want. Uh, to execute a complex computation as fast as possible, but we also are ref referring to real-time requirements in which we have we want to guarantee that the computations occur within a, a given end-to-end -end, uh, response time budget. We want uh, systems to be executed within a certain energy or thermal budget, we want to guarantee, we have to guarantee safety requirements to ensure the correctness and the integrity of the system, but also security requirements that guarantees or events, external events uh, affecting the correctness and the integrity of the system. And so this makes the, the use of these uh, processor architectures within the embedded domain more complex. And so when we are referring to um, to uh, heterogeneous and, and parallel architectures, uh, we are following what it is called a, a host-centric paradigm, in which the parallel computation is orchestrated by a, by a multi-core uh, EPU that is also in charge of executing the intensive control flow applications. Then we have a number of, of accelerators, either software accelerators or hardware, ac hardware accelerators with fixed uh, functionalities that are responsible of executing and as, as uh, its name says, to accelerate the execution of certain functionalities. Uh, all these, the, the, the accelerators and the multi-cores are interconnected through a network on chip and a shared memory. And of course, there is the 
a difference that connects um, the processor architecture with the easy cobalt. And so um, this, 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 um, this complex architecture, the, the, there is a need, as I said before, to on one side efficiently exploit the analyzm in order to, to achieve the level of performance that is needed, but also reasoning about the, the functional and non-functional correctness. And this creates what it is called the software productivity gap. So while the hardware complexity has increased uh, significantly, and we all know this, the software complexity in order to deal, in order to extract, to exploit the performance capabilities of this hardware has even increased at a higher pace. While the software productivity has decreased at a lower pace. And this creates this gap. And so what the Ampere is addressing is precisely this gap. So how we can reduce this gap? And so what, how, how we can make uh, use a, a, a more efficient use of parallel architecture in terms of software productivity. Okay, and so um, both the HPC and the embedded domain has addressed this guy uh, use, using different uh, different means or using different methods. So from the from the hardware perspective, or let's say from the HPC perspective. Um, uh, the use of, 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 of parallel programming models is fundamental in order to provide this uh, software productivity. Uh, why is that? Because it provides the level of abstraction that is, that is needed in order to describe the parallelism of uh, the system while hiding all the hardware complexities. It allows uh, the same uh, system, the same program to be portable across multiple parallel architectures and uh, of course it 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 provides all the all the tools all the means in order to exploit the both the performance and the heterogeneous capabilities um on the embedded domain the use of model driven engineering has been used for uh, for uh, for a number of years uh, in order to describe and develop complex system uh, by implementing what it is called the correct by construction paradigm, in which the system is described in a logical manner, and then is is the code is automatically generated, allowing allowing to implement a uh, formal verification methods that. Uh, provides means and tools to guarantee the functional and non-functional requirements. However, this type of methods are only, um, only address a single core execution or very limited parallel support. And so what the Ampere project is addressing is precisely this, how we can, how we can bridge the gap between the model-driven engineering approaches and the power and the parallel programming models. And so how we can bridge the gap? So it, the Hamper project has been working on three main lines. The first line is a code synthesis methods that given the description of the system in, in some domain specific modeling language, we can efficiently generate the corresponding parallel source code while including all the non-functional requirements within a code. We have also been working on uh, runtime parallel frameworks that on one side allows to exploit the performance capabilities, while, an, while on another side also allows a guarantee the system correctness. And the third um, uh, axis, we have been working on implementing all this into a real model-driven engineering framework. And so this has been the, 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 let's say the main outcome of the Ampere project. That is a, a, no, a, a software architecture that is able to bridge this gap. 
by having a, a set of domain specific modeling languages that allows to describe the system trying to include as less information as uh, the underlying platform as possible. So the, the, uh, the software developer does not need to take care at all about the complexity or of a hardware or the parallelism existing within the uh, within a system. Then we have a set of methods that allows to 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 transform the system description to the uh, to the parallel uh, programming model, so we can make an efficient use of the underlying platform, guarantee the fulfillment of the non-functional requirements. And so um, one key element, one, one, one key aspect of the project is productivity, okay? This has been a keyword that has been uh, um, uh, taken into account uh, through all the different phases of the project, from a progr programmability perspective, from a portability and a scalability, and from a performance guaranteed performance perspective. And so um, the different layers of uh, the software architecture um, are addressing uh, different aspects, important aspects of the development, deployment, and execution of uh, embedded systems. And so um, during the different presentations, we are going to describe and explain each of the elements uh, that are included within the Ampere software architecture. But let me provide a very quick uh, uh, and, um, and, and brief explanation on what are the main aspects addressed by each of the by each of the layers. So the first layer is the one that allows us to describe the model. To, sorry, to describe the system by using a, a domain a specific uh, modeling language. In fact, we have uh, considered two languages, Apella and Amalfia, that allow us to address the, the different phases of uh, a B model. So once we have uh, this uh, description, including information as well as the platform and very minimum information uh, that uh, allows um, or that helps the rest of the layers to identify the parallelism existing within a system so it can be exploited. And this is done by the second uh, by, by the second layer that is responsible of given taking this um, this um, this system model um, automatically generate the corresponding uh, parallel uh, code parallel or code by using code synthesis tools and compiler methods as well as uh, a multi criteria optimization uh, phase that allows us to uh, guarantee or, or to ensure the non-functional um, the uh, the non-functional aspects of of the of a system and finally we have a, a, a runtime framework that is not only responsible of exploiting the performance capabilities of the underlying platform, but also to constantly checking and monitor the execution of the system to uh, guarantee that the uh, to guarantee the fulfillment of the non-functional requirement and if needed to reallocate the system. Um, the Ampere has considered two use cases upon which the software architecture has been tested. So we have an obstacle detection and avoidance uh, systems uh, from the uh, railway domain. In fact, this has been implemented in the in in several vehicles uh, of the tramway of Orems, 
and we have also an automotive uh, use case, a predictive cruise control use case that extends the functionality of the adaptive cruise control functionality. Um, something that I think it's it's very important to to take into to take into account is that the uh, the development of the software architecture has been designed uh, taking into account modularity. What does this mean? It 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 means that it is not a monolithic solution composed by multiple pieces in which if you remove one of the pieces, the software architecture does not work anymore. But instead, allow us to combine different components in order to provide different functionalities and exploit a different type of software architect, sorry, uh, different type of, of hardware architectures. For example, in the project, we have considered two different types of uh, processor architectures. One in which uh, uh, includes a GPU accelerator and NVIDIA from the NVIDIA Jetson family, and another one that includes FPGA accelerator, okay, from the uh, shillings. And so, in case of the of the predictive cruise control use case, we have, for example, use uh, the Amartya domain specific language. And for this case, we have exercised an an experiment with all the software architecture. While in the case of the uh, ob object um, detection um, and avoidance system. Uh, we have only used some of those components in order to prove this this modularity of the of the design. Okay, so that's all from my side. Um, um, here, I suggest, in case you have some questions, I I suggest uh, to to wait um, because now um, the diff. Um, um, we are going to focus on the different aspects and different uh, layers of the software architecture. Okay, so thank you very much. And then I pass uh, the word to Aikala.